Hey everybody, it's Matt Shu from Upright Health. In this video, we're going to look at a, a study that was published in the British Journal of Sports Medicine in December of 2014 that looks at the clinical exams done to determine whether or not somebody does or does, does not have FAI or a, and or a labral tear. So um, there are numerous physical exams that are available in an orthopedic environment to attempt to determine whether or not you have FAI or a labral tear. Uh, so if you've already undergone exams, you know that there are these tests that involve flexing your hip, internal rotation, external rotation, doing adduction, doing abduction, um, doing straight leg raises, maybe doing a deep squat. There are a whole lot of different physical tests that are purported to be useful in determining whether or not you have some sort of intra-articular hip pathology. So this study um, called the Diagnostic Accuracy of Clinical Tests for the Diagnosis of Hip Femoral Acetabular Impingement Slash Labral Tear, a Systematic Review with Meta-Analysis, tries to uh, quantify the usefulness of all of these tests. And uh, what they did was they, they did a big literature search for a bunch of different studies um, to see what kind of good data was available, whether they could find uh, studies that were done that were not done in a, a, an extremely biased way, um, and done in a way where they could extract data and analyze the data to see if, in fact, uh, these different tests are useful in helping uh, orthopedic physicians and people in an orthopedic clinical setting, um, if, it, if these things could be helpful to them to actually determine whether somebody has FAI or a labral tear. Uh, and so I want to highlight uh, the findings. Um, so in the conclusion, they basically said, owing to the low quality and biased sampling of patients with high probability of disease, hip physical examination tests do not appear to currently provide the clinician, meaning your doctor, any significant value in altering probability of disease with their use. So uh, essentially, the, the study basically found that there were no good studies to determine uh, there were no good studies that showed that these tests are actually useful. Um, and in fact, what they mention in the study is um, the results of these tests appear to minimally change the clinician's treatment strategy and the participants do not appear to be better off as a result of performing the tests. Um, the current scope of literature investigating these tests is narrow in its focus. Um, generally only examining participants with high suspicion of pathology prior to test performance. Uh, and therefore results in tests, um, uh, oh, this therefore results in test results of high sensitivity and poor specificity. So um, what that means, it gets a little bit um, um, jargony here. So um, high sensitivity basically means um, Basically, if you have a group of 10 people, and let's say, we're, let's talk about uh, labral tears. We have 10 people who have labral tears. Of those 10 people, um, does our test have a high percentage of identifying these people as having labral tears? Okay. So if, if we have 10 people who have labral tears, we want our test to, in order to have um, high sensitivity, then we want them all basically to be identified as having a labral tear. Uh, specificity, however, is if you have 10 people who don't have labral tears, um, will our test tell us that these 10 people don't have labral tears? So why is that important? Well, uh, as they're talking about in this study, all the studies that have been done previously on these physical exams uh, have people who have hip pathology and have a high suspicion of having hip pathology before ever doing the tests. And so if you have a group of people who all have the uh, have pathology, or a large majority have the pathology, and you do the test, if the test says, yes, uh, this person has it, and it says it too consistently, like let's say we had seven, let's say we have a group of 10 people, uh, and only seven of them actually have hip pathology but our test says all 10 have hip pathology. We have a fairly high sensitivity rate, meaning this test said 10 people had it and seven of them did have it. So we got seven correct positives, but we also got three false positives. But we have a high sensitivity number. We also wanna have a good specificity number and the specificity number would mean 
when they are negative, we want them to be come out from the test negative. But in the studies that have been done, you're always dealing with populations that have a high number of pathology, so you're really unable to test the, the uh, specificity very well. So um, they mentioned basically if you're dealing with people who all have hip pathology or who you know a large number have hip pathology, you have a setting where it's highly unlikely for you to be able to say anything about the specificity of the test. Um, and so they make a few other um, uh, few other notations in the study. Um, they said these clinical tests will provide the practicing clinician with limited to no assistance in determination of the presence or absence of FAI uh, slash acetabular label tear. And then they make another note that prospective studies examining clinical utility of these tests in patients with and without various hip pathologies are not available but are suggested. Uh, so this was done in, this was published in 2014. So um, essentially the study is saying, look, you need to be able to test uh, these studies in an environment where you can actually have true uh, negatives, meaning people who don't have the problem, um, to determine whether or not these tests are even valid and useful. Um, as they noted right now, they actually, these tests don't actually provide you with any reliable data. They may seem like they do, but in fact the, the data is showing that they are not that, um, not that valuable. Um, one thing that will make it very difficult, uh, I wanted to point out, one thing that will make it very difficult to determine uh, how useful these tests are is the fact that labral tears and uh, FAI bone morphology can be completely asymptomatic, which uh, has been seen in multiple, um, multiple large-scale population studies um, that I've mentioned in previous videos. Um, in, in those studies, they basically show that people can have the FAI bone morphology and have zero symptoms, no movement problems, no pain. Uh, in addition, uh, you can have a labral tear and have no movement problems, no pain, no clicking, no snapping, no popping. So um, you can have those issues and, you know, basically perform any test without a problem. Then it's going to be very difficult to examine the usefulness of physical exam tests like the ones that are typically used um, and studied in orthopedic articles like this. So I wanted to share this study with you so you, you have this to reference. You can use it as food for thought if you're a researcher or you are a physician yourself. Um, it would definitely be good to take a look at this study. Uh, I hope you find it useful and I hope you remember that pain sucks. Life shouldn't.